Hello, everyone, and welcome to PAEA September mini webinar, Accessible Presentations. Tonight, we will hear from PAEA Art and Special Education Interest Group Chair, Margo Wonder, who will share the basics of creating accessible presentations for all learners. Registered participants will receive a Google Form link by email after the event to fill out for their half hour of Act 48 credit. This, this webinar will be recorded and available at a later date on the PAEA website. Before beginning the webinar, we are asking participants to mute your microphones during the presentation, but you may keep your video on. Those, look, those controls are located in the bottom left corner of the controls bar. We are leaving it up to you to decide on your level of privacy as the recording will be housed on the PAEA website. We are also asking everyone to sign in on the chat roll. Please use the same name in which you register for this event. The chat roll can be found along the bottom in the controls bar as well. Signing in will ensure that you receive the Act 48 link. Please feel free to add questions in the chat along the way. Margo will address the questions in the chat at the end of the presentation, or you may save them for the live Q&A period after the presentation. Let's get this webinar rolling. Margo, take it away. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Jill. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Margo Wonder. I am a white woman wearing black framed glasses and uh, brown hair tied into a bun with a beige sweater. Uh, I like to give a visual description of who I am. So those of us who are participating um, who might be visually impaired are included. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Jill. I am the K through 12 art teacher at Martin Luther School. Uh, Martin Luther School is an approved private school that serves the needs of students with severe emotional and behavioral challenges. Uh, we also uh, have a residential treatment program in um, our company, Gemma Services. So roughly a third of the students I teach live on campus in residential treatment. Uh, I am also a former lecturer at the University of the Arts. I used to lecture in the art and design education department before the university closed. And as Jill mentioned, I'm very involved in PAEA. It's an awesome organization. I'm proud to be the Art and Special Education Interest Chair and the Treasurer for the Art and Special Education Interest Group of the NAEA. Um, we're looking at a photograph of a portrait of yours truly with green and black hair and a uh, smiling red mouth uh, with my name spelled with an O, Ms. Wonder. Uh, I think it's really important to uh, be sure that we are providing alt text for any photographs that we share. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, all of that uh, as we move on. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, Jill, Jill described some of it. Um, we'll share some best practices for presentations. I'm going to talk about some tools that you can use. Um, I'm a big Google slide girl. Um, we'll talk about accessible fonts and backgrounds to make your presentations um, really accessible for your participants. We'll talk about troubleshooting um, so that we can be the most inclusive presenters we can be. And Jill had mentioned um, typing questions and comments into the chat. Uh, I also want to invite you to just go ahead and jump in with any questions that you might have during this presentation. Um, and um, because I might, I might not see all of you, uh, just feel free to just jump in and interrupt, really. Um, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the font I'm using in this presentation. This is Verdana. Um, that's my preferred font. I'll um, also talk about other fonts from the Sans Serif family. Verdana is uh, used by most accessibility sites, so it is my preferred um, font for my text in my presentations. Now I'm going to go back to my first slide that had the portrait of smiling me with green and black hair. Um, this is a, a slide pulled directly from the templates in Google Slides. As I mentioned before, I really like to use Google Slides. Most um, organizations use them because Google's a free platform. And oftentimes if you have a presentation that you uh, create using a different app, even through PowerPoint, um, when you share that via uh, Google Slides, it oftentimes gets reformatted uh, and you might lose some of those um, those those accessibility features that you worked so hard to put into your your slide deck. Um, so that's 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 my personal choice is always Google Slides. Um, and this was pulled directly from their templates. Uh, it was pretty good to start, but I, I will say that I had to go back and change the color of the text because it was actually a dark gray and not a black and there wasn't enough contrast with the black background and this kind of darker gray text. So I wanted to be sure that um, my text was accessible. Uh, of course, um, 
I, I also make use of emboldening uh, when, when necessary. And as I mentioned before, it's really good practice to not only describe the pictures that you're sharing, but also provide alt text for those who might be visually impaired. Here's an example of kind of not quite as accessible. I see this font a lot. It's super cute. It's super fun. I love that, like that look of that kind of handwritten text, but it's very difficult to read. I know that if I was in the back of a room, I wouldn't see it very well. Um, it also is in a dark gray color, the text. There's not enough contrast. It's hard to read. Uh, additionally, if we look at the alt text below the photograph of Smiling Me with the green and black hair where it says Ms. Wonder, uh, it's a little too close to the bottom of the image. So the alt text is eclipsed. It's hard to read. Additionally, that block of text is too close to the image. Um, so it can be a little confusing. Um, so we've got a poor choice of text, we've got a poor color choice, and we've kind of mashed all of that text together. So it's, it's a little more difficult to read. As I mentioned, the built-in slide designs that Google provides are pretty good. They provide pretty decent co contrast, but you really do wanna check those fonts for accessibility. I think you'd be surprised by how many of the fonts that are built into these decks are actually not in the sans serif family. And also you wanna check that color contrast for your text and your background. All right, here are some of the most accessible fonts uh, that you all should be aware of. Uh, they all come the San, from the sans serif family, uh, Verdana being the one used by most accessibility sites. So that's usually my go-to, uh, but any one of these fonts I think you'll find are pretty accessible um, and, and easy to read. Uh, here's an example of uh, a slide that is not accessible. Uh, what do you notice? And you're more than welcome to just chime in. What do you notice about this slide that's problematic? Uh, there's too many images. There are too many images, yes. What else? Um, the words are that are on the images are unlegible. Yes. Thank you for that. It's really difficult to read the text. We've got way too many images and all that text, which is probably important, is really difficult to, to read. So one thing that we want to be aware of is we want to reduce the amount of images that we're adding to our slides. And we also want to never put text on top of images or on top of photographs. They're very difficult to read and it's really difficult to make them accessible. Here's another example of a slide I don't think I would want to include in my presentation. What's wrong with this slide? It's too small. <laughs> yeah, too small. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm this close to my laptop and I can barely read it. There, there's a much better way we could use this space here. It's too small. We also don't need all those words. So these different types of presentations, we could just have, you know, we've got informative, persuasive, demonstration, motivational, and reporter research. It could just be those words bulleted, and then I can expand on it. That way I can have these nice and big, they can be at least 24 point, probably even bigger because I have all that room on my slide. And then I can just go into further detail about what those presentations are. All right, so some things that are available to us, one of which I'm using right now um, is, you know, right now I'm using captioning and that's through Google Slides. Um, you can also use screen reader support um, and you can also use that to open braille display, which would be through third-party apps. So, um, but I did wanna mention that there, but for those of you that don't know, you can close caption your Google slide presentations. If you have a device that has a microphone, then you can caption your presentations. You can be doing that in your classrooms. You can be doing that um, you know, when you present uh, for you know, the PAEA conference, for example. And here's how you do it. 
when you go into slide presentation mode, you'll see that those those three dots down there at the bottom, you know, when you go into presentation, you'll have this menu pop up. Down close to the bottom, second to the bottom, where it says captions and preferences, you click on that, and then you have the option to toggle captions. You can also put those captions at either the top or the bottom of your slides. If you have uh, slides that are text heavy at the top, then you want to keep those captions at the bottom, of course. And you can also increase the size of your captions. So something to be aware of. And, you know, again, for folks who might uh, need the captioning because maybe they're, you know, they have auditory challenges, but I can put do this in my classroom and I can be building literacy with my students because they're now reading along as I'm teaching. So it's a really great tool um, for many, many different reasons. All right, let's talk a little bit about backgrounds. I mean, we kind of have a leg up as art teachers, right? We're pretty aware of contrast. We know how to make our text stand out. Um, it's pretty clear that when we're doing stuff like this, our slides are gonna be really difficult to read, right? So we wanna be aware of that contrast. There's some super awesome apps out there that a lot of people use to create their slideshows. Some of those super awesome apps have these really cool, you know, animations, really cool patterns that you can put, you know, as your wallpaper for your slides, but that makes things really confusing. And when I put presentations together, I really want my audience to be able to see and read what I'm putting on my slides. If it's important enough to be in my slideshow, then it's important enough to be read. So I would really caution you um, to avoid including patterns. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, you all noticed when you put text on top of images, it makes it difficult to read. So we're going to go through a little accessibility checklist here. Uh, it's really important to try and minimize the amount of slides you have. Um, you want your colors to be high contrast. I can't mention that enough. Um, folks who have low vision, people who are colorblind are really gonna appreciate that. Color should not be the only way that you distinguish important information. If we look at only way on this slide, it is emboldened, it is italicized, it is in all caps, it's also underlined. So someone who can't distinguish the color knows it's still important because I've shown all these different ways um, that it is important, okay? As I mentioned, you wanna use very large, at least 24 point um, simple fonts, fonts from the sans serif family, Arial, Verdana, Helvetica, as I mentioned in that slide before. You want it to be easily read. You want people who are in the back of the room to be able to see it. I caution you to make presentations that are super colorful. Uh, if we look at this slide, it's kind of hard to take it seriously. <laughs> there's a there's like too much going on here. Um, I do like the highlighted uh, first bullet because that's really easy for me to read. Everything else gets lost. I'm not taking this seriously. And if we look down at the, the fourth bullet, there's not nearly enough contrast there. Okay, so things to keep in mind when we are using color in our presentations, I really do like to keep them simple. I like having slide backgrounds that have color to them to just kind of break things up. But as you notice in this presentation, they're, they're pretty muted, you know, muted yellows, muted blues, so that my text really stands out. Um, here's a great example of that contrast. This purple and this white works, right? There's not too much information here. I've got decent contrast. I know what's important. I don't have a million colors here, so I know that, that I can take this seriously. All right, so full disclosure, this is not a very good slide. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, there's way too much text on this slide, but I want you to be able to see the information that I'm giving you. Um, so please don't make a slide like this. Minimize the amount of text on your slides, okay? Uh, when you advance your slides, it's good practice to pause so people have a chance to read what's on it before you say anything. That way, people who are deaf, and quite honestly, everybody else in the room, is able to read it before you start talking. Now, folks will say that it isn't good practice to read 
what's on your slides. However, I feel that if I read the text that's on my slides, I am making my presentation accessible. So I kind of throw that rule out the window. All right. So I think it's important to read what's on this slide. That way people know what's on it. All right. We saw that example of that slide that had all the visuals, all the photographs on it with all the text that was really difficult to read. We really wanna limit those visuals. Uh, it can be very overwhelming, very overstimulating. It's too much information at once. We need to be inclusive by describing our images. So I wanna make my life easier by limiting the amount of visuals I have on my slides. Okay. You also wanna be in the practice of having that alt text. So, if I have a bunch of images, then I also have a bunch of alt text, then I have a really jumbled up slide. So keep those images to a minimum. Um, describe them so everybody in the audience knows what the image is. Um, and also if you have graphs or charts, you also wanna be describing them and summarizing them as well. Um, what's wrong with this visual? Everybody's good with it. The the colors, I I can't read them. The yeah. one the things on the top, um, I don't know what it's saying. Exactly, the contrast is terrible. There's a ton of color, and I can't read anything. Um, I think that if I were, if this was a super important graphic that I wanted to share, uh. I probably just have this in a handout or maybe I would upload it with my presentation, but I would definitely do some rehashing here. This would be so much easier to read in black and white. I, I don't even know why it needs to be in color um, or maybe with a minimal amount of color. Yes, I agree with you. It's really difficult to read. The contrast on the, the key milestones down at the bottom, that yellow with that grayish text, really difficult to read. The only thing that I can come close to reading is the, the white text on top of the green because there's contrast there. Thank you. So that chart was way too complex. There was way too much color. It was difficult to read. It needed to be simpler, right? And again, if I needed something super complicated, I'd put that in a handout. If we have animations in our slideshow, we wanna try and control that speed so that you can then fully describe what's going on. Uh, you wanna be sure your videos are captioned. And Jill and I were discussing this earlier. If you were presenting on Zoom, you wanna be sure that you have that link loaded <laughs> so, um, so you can jump right into that video. And you wanna be sure your captioning is turned on. And before playing it, you wanna describe it to your audience so they know what they're going to be seeing or not seeing. Um, I'm about to show a video of an art teacher teaching uh, her second grade class and she has a really great way of getting a student who really doesn't want to, to join in to join in. I'm gonna share it with you now. Um, so you, again, give, give, give your audience members uh, a preview. Um, so they can get context for what they're going to be hearing if they're not going to be able to see it. You want your question and answer period to be accessible. So if you are presenting with a microphone, share your microphone with your audience members. And if that isn't an option, repeat their questions so everyone can hear. It's good practice to be repeating questions anyway. We should be doing that in our art rooms when we're teaching, and we should be doing that um, in our presentations as well. I came across this, this slide and I thought it was a really great resource um, from Queens University in Belfast. Um, and it's actually, it's, it's linked. So um, I think if the slideshow is shared, you can probably find the link, but I did wanna give the credit to Queens University in Belfast. Um, so a nice little uh, acronym, S-L-I-D-E. Um, think about your heading styles, think about your hyperlinks so that they're meaningful, embe uh, meaningfully embedded and they're descriptive. Think about those images, make sure you don't have too many, make sure there's alt text. Think about clear design and use an accessibility checker. Evaluate your, your slideshows, make sure they're accessible. So here's what, that's my, that's my tip to all of you. It's kind of a little freebie I found for myself. I just, I love it. So to think about slide when you're creating your presentations. 
And that's about all I have. I just wanted to share with you one of my students' hands reaching into their red paint of their palette, working on one of their paintings on one of my tables in the art room. Um, so we've got about 10 minutes for comments, questions, thoughts, any tools or tricks that you would like to share. I'd love to open the floor to all of you. Um, I this is more of a question, but I am working with um, college aid students, and they're really in love with um, like the Canva yeah. and things and the busyness of um, and like making them cute um, per se. And I th I'm I after seeing this, I'm like, no, I think we should go to Google Slides. But I'm what is I and I would. I'm going to su su suggest some of these things, but what is your suggestion of like, you know, that I, 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 I have had my college students at the University of the Arts create these just mwah, beautiful, beautiful, right? They're beautiful presentations, but they're so busy, you know, they're so busy and they, there's their animations and there are these really busy backgrounds. And, you know, as, as, I, you know, I, I, I gotta, you know, I, I, I gotta wear my accessibility hat even with my college students too. And I'll say that was a really beautiful presentation. I wonder if maybe if it were a little simpler, um, maybe, you know, maybe someone who was colorblind or someone who was visually impaired could be included in, in such a fantastic presentation. Um, that's probably, that would probably be my approach because I, I do think Canva like puts together such lovely things. They're really wonderful. It's just, it's really, really great eye candy, but they're not accessible. They're really not accessible. Um, and so maybe at the beginning of your, you know, of, of, of your semester with your students, you might want to go over that with them because they're going to go on to present and you want them to be giving accessible presentations too. It should be something that they're aware of. And it's, I think it would be our responsibility as educators to just share that with them. And it is so tempting to put together these juicy, beautiful slideshows, but they're, they're just difficult. They're difficult for, for, you know, I, you know, I wear glasses, but you know, I, I can't see the information that you're giving me and it's important. You know, that, that would be, that would be my approach to it. It's a, it's a really, it, it's a, that's a great question. Thank you for that. Anything else? Um, Margo, it's Maggie. Um, hey, Maggie. Hi, could, could you explain one more time how to do the close captioning is that what you were doing where you go to the yeah, absolutely in fact um let me see i uh, if i do this though you're gonna have to see my very busy desktop <laughs> but here it is right you can still see my screen correct yes okay oh, so yeah. go to slideshow and then i'm gonna go right down to the bottom where these three dots are i'm gonna click on that I'm gonna to go to caption preferences and then I will toggle captions and not Chicago captions, but toggle captions. And now I'm being captioned. I can do it one more time. Yeah, cause I wanted to try it on, I'm getting one open so I can try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just as just as soon as you go to present, then you, you go down to the three dots um, where that option will show up as part of the menu right here three dots boom second to the bottom caption preferences toggle captions and this is also a feature i believe with powerpoint but as i mentioned before so many organizations use google slides and oftentimes you're asked to share your presentation before you give it so if you have something that you've done uh, on a different app it is often it will often change your style, your font, et cetera. So I, I really do prefer to just stick with Google Slides because it's got this accessibility feature built right in and most people use it. And so you have to redo that every time you do the presentation? You have to go uh, and... Yeah, whenever you go to present, uh, but I mean, it's it's just one more button really that you're pushing, you know, you, you hit the presentation button and then you, you toggle your captions. Um, and if you have a loud classroom, it, it is there 
any kind of problem with like getting the wrong voices? Well, again, I think that um, you would need to be you would need to, to be close to your device. So if you you know if you're presenting from your desktop, then you would need to be close to your desktop. Um, so that that would be that would be an issue. Um, I, I I think that um, yeah, I think I mean I think that uh, I, I sorry to hear that your classroom would be loud. Um, but. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just thinking about like if I the slides and stuff, but if I was thinking of doing like a demonstration mm -hmm. in this, it might be a little bit harder if kids are like surrounding you in a big group. Well, that might be something then maybe you would do your demonstration through like a video and then I might do it. Yeah, I might do it through YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Anybody else? I think we have like just a couple more minutes. If anybody has anything they, they in their practice that they share, you know, I'm 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 I'll tell you right now, I, I'm I am as much of an expert as the next person is. Um you could I mean thinking about if you had students at a round table, you could um verbally like think about what you're going to say and type out those steps and have that as a handout um, so the students could follow along um, like a script rather than um, that. And then they would have it as a reference when they go try it on their own as like a cheat sheet. That could be another space if you were worried about the captioning. Yeah, that's a great idea. And you know, a lot of a lot of students do benefit from having those, you know, visual directions right there at, at hand. And then they can refer back to it. So someone who might not be um at the same point as everybody else's can can then have the benefit of going going back and you know say, oh, oh wait, okay, I do this next. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is I think definitely good for, you know, what's best for some is best for all. Agreed. A hundred percent. You know, I mean, when we think about accessibility, it's, it's really, it really is for all. And, and I think you, you put that very well. It's true. You know, um, yeah, we think of, you know, um, universal design is designing for everybody. And this is, you know, this is universally designing your slides. Yeah. Is anyone presenting at the PAEA conference? Mm. Yes. I am, but I do have one question about the alt text. Do you know yeah. about like a suggestion of how many words in an image description? I, I, I'm telling you like alt text is super challenging, right? You don't want it to be really long, but you also don't want to leave out valuable information. You know, I think that when we look at like Wikipedia's alt text is, is really pretty terrible. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I, I think that there are important things to think about that get written out of alt text. Um, things like gender, things like race that are important, you know, and I so I, I try and make a point of, of, you know, including skin tones in my alt text. Uh, because, I, you know, one thing I've learned using um, artificial intelligence, um, I teach virtually uh, one day a week with my students. So I do a lot of like AI programming with them. And we've learned that if you're trying to do a self-portrait using prompts with AI, it always goes to to like white skin tones. So like, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm really conscious of not um, kind of erasing race with my alt text. Um, so I think as as like condensing it as much as possible without leaving out the important information <laughs> and how's that for a non answer for you <laughs> you know you don't you don't want too many words you know again we don't want too many words uh because it's it just then that becomes like a, a you know like a little mini paragraph we don't want a mini paragraph but we we want someone who can't see this clearly to know what's going on good question thank you for that Well, I think this was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No, it was my pleasure. Thank you all for coming out at seven o'clock on a Sunday night. Woo. Thank you. 
Um, those of you who are presenting um, in in uh, Hershey this year, good luck. Um, hopefully you found something that you can take away to make your presentations inclusive. Uh, hopefully I'll run into some of you at the conference. Um, and um, again, thank you for coming out on a Sunday night. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Margo. That was some great information. We do hope everyone has enjoyed their time with us tonight and feel more confident about rethinking and creating more accessible presentations for their classrooms. And I did go ahead and um, in the chat, I added the link to the conference. So if anybody is still sitting on the fence about joining us in Hershey, the link is there to go check it out. I mean, you know, content specific professional development in chalk. But, you know, I'm down with that. So, you know, that's that's going to be a good time. So please, if you haven't already registered, join us in Hershey. Remember to check your email for the Act 48 link coming soon. And unless anybody else has any other questions. If not, then I think that's a wrap. Thank you again, Margo. My pleasure. Everybody have a great night.